Good morning. I like honeybees, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. You know, as a kid, there were some hives on my grandma's farm, and a guy would come along every now and then and do, quote unquote, rob the bees and take some of their honey and see about the hives. Well, eventually a bear got into them, we think, or something rather large and tore them all up, and they never were the same after that. Well, now I live in a completely different state, and I don't have hives anymore. But when I was a kid, I was very interested in honeybees, and Back then, before the internet, I got out the World Book Encyclopedia and some, I remember, manila-covered art paper, and I read all about honeybees, and I wrote all these facts down, and I really knew a lot about bees for a very small kid, because I was really interested in it. That's how I learned things. And I learned that honeybees can do a dance and point other honeybees to flowers that they've discovered. I learned about the different classes of the queen, the drone, and the workers. I learned that they were all female except for the drones. I learned that they lived for about two weeks and, you know, the workers literally fly their wings to shreds. And I thought I really had a good working knowledge about honeybees. And I became the bee advocate at the school I teach at, which doesn't really mean anything other than I fulfilled a role in order for our agriculture department to get some sort of grant, is my understanding. But... I really love honeybees and respect them, and God made them to produce one of the most delicious, natural, incredible things that man just can't replicate. It's good for us, and it's tasty, and it's sweet and wonderful. However, I learned something yesterday that I didn't know. Yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. Did you know that when honeybees get old, supposedly, they fly out to do their gathering, and they stay out on flowers when they get old and they sleep on flowers. They do this in case they die. They know their time is about done. And if they stay out there and they die, they won't die in the hive and have to be disposed of. They're literally trying to not be an inconvenience. They work together with such synchronicity that it just blows my mind. Now, what does all this have to do with the way we approach our faith and what we do? Well, you know what? Christians ought to act a little bit more like a hive than we do. Now, I don't mean that we mindlessly follow and don't think for ourselves. What I mean is, is we should have the same collective and common goal, and that is to spread the gospel to the world. People are going to do that different ways. We have evangelists that tour around, preachers that hold sermons on Sunday, Sunday school teachers, individual ministries. And we have stuff like my video ministry here. And I'm thinking of maybe jumping over and doing some stuff on TikTok. I don't know. But the point is, is that all Christendom should be working together to spread that positive message of salvation to the world. Sometimes we focus on, well, we don't like this, or we don't like that, or, oh, this is just terrible, or, oh, we need to fight against this. And we do have to stand for certain things. I'm not saying that we don't. But I will tell you right now, our message and our command, the greatest thing that we should be doing is loving our neighbor as ourselves and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. People do need to change, but you know who will help them change? And that's the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus themselves. They will help you change. You don't have to change to come to God. You come to God to change. Jesus meets you right as you are. He will save you if you ask him to. That doesn't mean you'll instantly be perfect and drop all of your problems and bad habits and things, but it means that a work has been begun in you and he will continue to help you become a sanctified person. And that's a lifelong process. That doesn't mean certain things should change when you get saved. Absolutely, because we repent and turn from our sin. But does this immediately uh, does it immediately mean that we have out all together and then we're perfect from there on out? It doesn't mean that. It means that we're continually on a journey. Don't be so hard on yourself and don't think you can't be saved. Just come to Jesus as you are. 
with your baggage, your fears, and your sins that you don't know what to do with because he does know what to do with them and he will save you. And join that great collective, that great body of Christ that goes out into the world to preach the gospel to every living creature, to spread kindness, love, peace, and joy, to work as one. It's not perfect, but it's because we're not perfect. Those of you that are non-Christians and like to run down Christians and Christianity, I understand there are a lot of Christians that really don't act like Christians. But I will tell you this, don't judge Christianity by the members of its church. Look at Jesus Christ and judge it by that because he's our example and we're all on a journey. Have a great day. Be kind to each other and see you next time.